Welcome to an introduction to sustainability case studies. In this video, you'll learn how to analyze complex problems. Hi, I'm Sarah. Every year my school hosts a sustainability fair to raise money for charity. We have rides and games, food, and live music. We usually make more than $5,000 in profit, which is donated to a local sustainability nonprofit group. But last year we made less than half of our fundraising goal, only 2100 As the president of the Sustainability Fair Planning Committee, my job is to figure out how to fix this problem. To do this, I'm going to use a tool called a fishbone diagram. This is a fishbone diagram. It's a way to represent the problem we need to solve and all of the contributing factors that may have caused it. The head of the fish represents the central problem we want to analyze, while the bones of the fish are all of the things that are causing the problem to occur. Once we've organized the details of our problem in this way, we can plan new strategies to address each of the causes of the problem, and I'll be able to make sure this year's sustainability fair is a fun and successful event. So let's start by taking a look at how we usually run the sustainability fair. It takes place every year on Earth Day. Everyone from the school and the surrounding community is invited, and most years over 2,000 people show up. The cost of admission is $5, but it includes unlimited games and rides, a couple local bands play live music, and food trucks provide refreshments. Sounds like fun, right? Well, unfortunately, last year a number of factors contributed to a disappointing event, with lower attendance, higher costs, and ultimately less money to donate to charity. I did some research to find out what happened. Some factors were out of our control. For example, the morning of the sustainability fair was cold and cloudy and looked like it might rain. Even though the sun came out eventually, many people may have made plans to stay indoors. Also, the company that provides the rides and games for the fair increase their rental fees. Since they are the only company in the area that provides what we need, we had no choice but to pay the extra fees. Finally, last year's Earth Day just happened to be the same day that our school's football team played our biggest rival. It's possible that many people didn't attend our event because they went to the game. Other factors were the result of decisions we made hoping to raise more money for our charity. For example, other fairs in the area charge twice as much money as ours does. We decided to increase the admission fee from $5 to $7 in order to increase our profits. After the event, we received feedback from the community that most people thought this was too much money to charge for the admission. Another decision we made was to increase the number of food trucks. We thought a large variety of food vendors would make people more likely to attend, but when fewer people showed up, we ended up having to pay for the food they didn't buy. This dramatically increased our cost for the event. These are examples of decisions with unintended consequences. Although we made these choices to improve our event, the unintended consequences actually made things worse. One last set of factors involves opportunities to make improvements that we simply missed. Based on feedback we received, many students felt that the sustainability fair was getting boring. They complained that we have the same rides and games every year. If we had done some research before we planned the event, we could have added new games and rides to make the event more appealing. We also missed the opportunity to invite popular bands and musicians to play at the sustainability fair. If we had done a better job selecting the performers for our event, we might have attracted more attendees. So let's review all the factors that contributed to our problem. Bad weather, increased equipment costs, a football game occurred on the same day, higher admission fee, increased food costs, no new rides, and no popular bands. What a mess! It seems impossible to figure out how to fix such a complicated problem. That's why I'm using a fishbone diagram to analyze the problem. First, we identify the central problem we want to fix. In my case, it's that the sustainability fair raised less money for charity. 
Next, we identify the primary causes of our central problem. These are general categories into which all the contributing factors we identified can be grouped. When I researched why last year's fair failed to meet its fundraising goals, I identified three primary causes, lower attendance, higher costs, and missed opportunities. Now we can deal with that pesky mess of complicated contributing factors. For example, the factors that contributed to lower attendance are bad weather in the morning, higher admission fees, and an important football game. Higher costs were the result of increased fees for renting the rides and games, and having to pay for food that wasn't sold at the event. And finally, we missed important opportunities to get new rides and hire popular bands for live music. Now that I have an organized picture of what went wrong, we can develop solutions that target particular parts of the problem. For example, one possible solution would be to lower the admission fee back to $5. This would help increase attendance of the event. We can also see the parts of the problem that are interrelated. Notice that the missed opportunities, like bringing in new rides and popular bands, would probably improve the attendance, but could also increase costs. Visualizing the problem using a fishbone diagram helps us identify and avoid unintended consequences. Most importantly, a fishbone diagram can help me understand the complex problem and make changes that will make the sustainability fair better next year. In today's activity, you'll read real-life case studies on sustainability problems and possible solutions, use a fishbone diagram to analyze the contributing factors, and determine the effectiveness of the proposed solution.